Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at a mini PC from Azul. This is called the Inspire, and this particular one is powered by an i5-7200U. Uh, they've got an i7 version and an i3 version available as well. And what's unique about this thing is that despite the fact it has a full-powered mobile core processor built inside, it is fanless and runs completely silent. And we'll be taking a look at what this thing can do, how hot it gets, and all the other stuff in between here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Azul. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed this content before I uploaded it. So let's get into the hardware and then see how it performs. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware on this device. Now this is a bare bones kit, which means that you have to buy the RAM and the storage along with the computer itself. So the prices you're going to hear are not including those two components. You can find the ones that uh, best fit your needs. It does support uh, DDR4 RAM. Uh, so this one is the i5-7200U model. It sells for about $335 on Amazon right now. If you spend $449, you can get an i7. And if you just need an i3, uh, that'll run you $269. This is running with the 7th generation Intel chips, not the 8th generation, which have more cores now. But uh, overall, a pretty decent little configuration for the price point. Again, you do got to bring in that RAM and storage separately. And I did a video where I took it apart so you can see where all of those components go. Now, as I mentioned, this is completely fanless. There is no noise coming out of this while it is operating. And what they've done is they've turned the entire exterior casing here into a big heat sink. So the uh, processor will uh, just uh, radiate its heat out. So you want to keep the area around the computer clear so that uh, the natural airflow can drive that heat away. As a result, it will get warm to the touch, sometimes a little hot to the touch. But as you'll see in a little bit, it does a pretty nice job of managing its thermals without sacrificing performance. Uh, the one issue I did have with it though on the top of the grill here is that the label that it has on there to warn you about how hot it gets uh, was very hard to take off and there's still some remnants left in there so uh, you may want to spend some time scraping all of that off. Let's take a look at the ports on this one. Uh, your power connector goes in here. You have display port out right here along with HDMI. It supports 60 frames per second at 4K, so that was decent. You can run, I think, two separate uh, 4K displays off of this. It's whatever the Intel uh, display standard supports on this. Gigabit Ethernet, you've got two USB 3.0 ports over here. There's a Kensington lock here for locking it down on a desk. And uh, this port here is not a VGA port, but a serial port. And one of the target users for this device are home theater enthusiasts who sometimes use uh, serial connections to control different devices in their setup. So I think that's probably why that uh, serial port is on there. So you do have some old school connectors on there to some degree. On the front here, you've got an IR receiving area. So if you have a remote control that's transmitting IR, you can uh, get it in there. Now right here is a USB Type-C port. And my biggest disappointment with this one is that this is not a Thunderbolt port. I thought it would have been a really cool device to have some Thunderbolt here on the front, but uh, this is just USB Type-C. Over here, you've got a micro SD card slot for plugging in exterior storage. And then you also have a headphone jack along with another USB 3.0 port along with the power connector. Uh, it does support AC wireless, gets decent reception because it's got these huge antennas on here as well. So all in, not a bad little configuration. Uh, let's take a look now and see how it performs. Okay, so we've got everything booted up. And before we get into some of the performance here, I did want to let you know that the USB-C port is data only. So right now I've got a, a USB-C to HDMI adapter on here. And if I grab the uh, HDMI connector out of the back and plug it into here, you can see that uh, we're not getting anything up on the display because this port is only supporting data. So if you are looking to add a third display, for example, uh, you're going to be out of luck here because that port uh, is data only. But let's plug this back into the monitor and take a look at how well it can browse the web. So let's take a look at my YouTube channel first here. We've got a video running at 1080p at 60 frames per second. And as we've seen on many of these other i5 based devices, we don't see many drop frames. We had uh, maybe two here at the outset, but generally in my testing here, this has been 
uh, running very smoothly even at 4K and even with high frame rates. So all good on that front as expected. I will take a look at the NASA website also, which is very multimedia rich. And you can see just how quickly everything comes up on here. A very fast response again because we've got a, a nice i5 chip in here uh, driving everything. So all good on that front as well. Uh, we did run the uh, speedometer test, which is a browser benchmark. And on that one, we got a score of 115, which puts it right in line with what we've seen from uh, many other i5-7200U chips that we've tested here on the channel. So from a performance standpoint, everything is working as expected, but completely silent because there is no fan in here. And of course, things like Microsoft Word and Office should run fine on here. We've got our usual newsletter template loaded up here that is uh, graphically intensive, yet uh, things are very snappy and responsive as you would expect out of one of these i5 processors. So for a general use computer, I think it is a, a pretty nice little device. Let's take a look now at something a little more demanding. So let's move on to some gaming and we're gonna start off with Rocket League and we were able to get about 60 to 85 frames per second out of this thing with all the settings turned down at 1080p. That's pretty good, I think, for uh, something lacking a discrete GPU. Uh, so good performance and uh, we were able to get a pretty playable session of Rocket League out of this thing, even though we're not seeing the best visual quality, we're at least able to get uh, the frame rate that we want. Now what I did on this one is I installed uh, my RAM in pairs and that is very important with these uh, Intel based machines because uh, what you want to do is get dual channel memory active and that will feed more data to the processor faster, which is very important for some of these graphically intensive games. And that's why we're able to achieve what we've been able to achieve here. And that was one of the features of the seventh generation processors was a much faster uh, graphics subsystem provided you've got that RAM installed in pairs and you can see the benefit of that here. Uh, we also took a look at Counter-Strike Go. Uh, again, at 1080p, all the settings turned way down. Uh, there we were getting about 72 to 100 frames per second, which is also very good. So I think just by and large, uh, having that uh, dual channel memory here is going to uh, make a pretty big difference as you're playing different games on this. I would imagine you might get a little better performance out of the i7, but uh, not significantly so, given they tend to run about the same graphically. You will get uh, the benefit of the faster CPU, of course, on the uh, i7. Now, we did also run Minecraft, as you can see here, 100 to 193 frames per second at 1080p uh, with the Optifine uh, performance enhancing plugin installed. So the casual games that we usually run on the low end hardware are working well here, along with some other games that, again, are taking uh, benefit of that uh, extra channel of memory. Now, on the 3 d Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 6,727, uh, which puts it right where I would expect it to perform given what it's configured with. And uh, we can compare that one to the Leva Z Plus that we looked at a few weeks ago, a uh, similar mini PC, uh, but it was a little more compact because they did put a fan on that one. We got pretty much the same performance out of this fanless one, even though the physical size is a little larger. Uh, this one performed about the same as that Leva did. So if you're looking for something silent, uh, this is silent and uh, will get you a very good i5 performance. And I would imagine the i7 version will perform about where you would expect it to as well. So not bad, again, uh, given that we're not hearing anything uh, coming out of the computer while it's under load. And speaking of under load, we ran the uh, 3D Mark stress test on this one, and we got a score there of 98.5%, which is a passing grade, surprisingly so, for a fanless computer. I was expecting to see uh, performance dropping off when we really put it under load with one of those uh, tests, and sure enough, it was able to stay uh, at that 98 percentile point and really not throttling at all as it got hotter. I would imagine your performance will vary. Again, you want to keep the entire area around the computer clear. You don't want to have it resting on carpet because this lower portion is a part of that uh, heat sink as well. So I think if you've got it uh, configured correctly in your room and have a good amount of airflow around it, it looks like it's going to uh, get warm, but that heat is not going to impact performance, which was quite a surprise to see given that uh, just about every other i5-7200U device I've looked at over the last year or so has had some kind of active cooling. Uh, this one is getting by just with passive cooling, and it doesn't appear in our testing to have any impact on performance, which was great to see. So let's move on now to Cody and home theater performance. And we've got our uh, jellyfish test file here that I like to run. This is 140 megabits per second, 4K HEVC at 10 bit. And 
Uh, we'll pull up our little guide here to see how it's playing back. And one of the advantages of the seventh generation Intel chips is that uh, these computers do have the ability to decode these videos in hardware. Uh, so we're not getting any dropped or skipped frames. Everything seems to be working quite well. Uh, earlier, I also ran this file on my uh, 4K television at 4K. No problem there. Everything uh, played back just as well as you're seeing here at 1080p. Uh, we also hooked up our home theater receiver for an audio check and we were able to get uh, all of the lossless audio formats to work on this as well. So DTS HD, Dolby True HD were working properly, which are very important to me as a home theater enthusiast. And I was also able to uh, get the device to shift down into a 24p frame rate for my Blu-ray MKVs as well. So from a home theater standpoint, uh, this checks all the boxes and I was playing back video quite smoothly and it looked very nice too on my 4K display. Now this computer does not come with a Windows license so you'll need to add that to your budget when you are pricing this out. But what you can do though is load up an open source operating system. We've got Ubuntu 17.10 on this one right now and uh, we'll load up uh, Firefox here and you can just get a sense as to how it performs uh, on an open source operating system. I found it to be uh, quite nice actually actually, and uh, all of the drivers were detected properly, so we got audio working without any problems. The Wi-Fi is working properly. The Ethernet is working, uh, as is Bluetooth. So I think from the standpoint of just uh, getting something you can play around with without having to buy a Windows license, you can easily install Ubuntu or likely uh, other open source operating systems and have a very nice experience on this device. It was really uh, pretty much plug and play here, so not too bad on the alternative OS front for this one. So all in, I'm pretty impressed with this computer, and I hear a lot from viewers about uh, fan noise on all the different computers we review here on the channel. In fact, some people have returned computers because the fans are too noisy on them. Uh, this one makes no noise at all, yet doesn't seem to have any penalty for the lack of active cooling. As long as you keep it clear, I think it will perform uh, quite well. It certainly did so in our testing. No noticeable throttling on the stress test that we ran and everything else we ran on it uh, seems to put it in line with all of the other computers we've looked at with this same processor that often have a fan built in uh, and I was pretty impressed by that. Now this is not a Core M processor that is designed to run fanless. This is a regular i5-7200U in this computer like you might see on a laptop with a fan. Uh, this is able to get it working again without uh, any kind of active cooling going on. So I'm really pleased with uh, what we got out of this thing and all of our testing. It does very well as a home theater box. It does very well as a general computing device and uh, seems to be functioning well with open source operating systems as well. So I think a real uh, fun toy for an enthusiast who's looking for a high powered box that uh, makes no noise. I think you could uh, safely uh, pick this one up and have a fun experience with it. Love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.